Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the official start of the podcast. And we're ignoring all the bits beforehand where we were having technical issues and a discussion of will NVIDIA keep the 3000 series that everyone thinks is going to be, or is Joker right, and will they go to the 2100 series? The epic question of the 2020s, if you want an epic question to keep your mind off all of the other way more important and very depressing things that are going on. Um, if you're listening to the VOD afterwards, type in the comment section, are you Team 3000 or Team 2100s? Inquiring minds want to know. So... Uh, official. Right, let's let's do this really, really structured. Let's go with official gaming news. Official gaming news. Somebody sent me a message. This is how I get my news. <laughs> Someone sent me a message. Cyberpunk's been delayed again? And so has uh, Bloodlines too. Has it? Is that true? Is it true? Is it true? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm really behind on all, but I've, I've got a list of things in my to watch and to read thing, but I'm constantly, I should probably just go straight to the latest news, but then I miss all the news in between. And I, and I'm one of those people that would like, no, I'll read that later, read that later, read that later. And I could be reading something that's like, you know, I, I'm the sort of person who would read about the incoming Armageddon, and, and I finally get to it. Oh God, there's a there's a meteor going to hit the planet in two weeks, and I'm look at the date and it's going like, oh, I should have read that two weeks ago. Oh crap! <laughs> and I go and look out the window. That's me. Um, Bloodlines has been delayed for a year. A year. They fired the leads. <sighs> okay, let's let's move. Let's move. Steam still says 19th of November for Cyberpunk. All right, so 19th of November for Cyberpunk. Bloodlines main writer and creative director were fired. Now, I did hear about that, and I've got a video flagged to watch that's got some information about that. Right. If that's fired, if that's, if that's delayed a year, that's huge. That is huge. Um... Right, that is, that is, that's obviously going to change a lot of my plans, although probably alleviate them, knowing my luck. So, better than cancelled. Oh, it's very much better than cancelled, but it's worrying that they fired some lead people. Um, this, could this mean they were not happy with the product? Does anybody have any of, I, I, I probably should do some Googling, but that's what you guys are. You are my Google. Um, all right. Well, obviously, I'm going to need to find out a lot more de uh, details. This isn't, from the looks of things, this isn't a simple, we just need a bit more time, coronavirus is causing delays, sort of thing. This is a, there's been a massive disagreement. So, um, the game looked kind of janky in the demos. Okay, so, so basically, the reception for the demos has not been good, so, okay. They fired all the Vampire 1 devs. How is that possible, really? Yeah, it's a little worrying. It's a little worrying. Ah, oh, well. My plan to, to, to do a, uh, a playthrough of Bloodlines and have it fresh in the mind when I, when I start Bloodlines 2 is probably a forlorn um, hope, isn't it? Um. <laughs> so... Snake Doctor, uh, random questions for later, please. Um, thank you. Thank you for the cheer. Um, didn't they have some scandals? Doesn't everyone have scandals? I don't even want to talk about scandals. I don't want to talk about... Everyone has scandals. Every single solitary... Everyone has scandals. Every single solitary development team has scandals. I've never worked in a firm that didn't have scandals, didn't have in-house gossip, didn't have, like, feuds going on. I've never worked in a... You, uh, in a firm that was a well-oiled machine, if it had more than about four people, everyone 
has scandals. And unless they're bought, unless they're illegal scandals, if they're like, you know, someone has actually done something and someone's a serious victim, I'm like, I'm all let that one pass. I get like people like, you know, do you know what one Deb said on his private Twitter stream about our Sharon? How dare he? I, so there's there's a, something like that. So it depends what we mean by scandals. It does depend what we mean by scandals. You never worked in a scandal. You've never worked with other people. Or you've been uh, wearing headphones the entire time. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. So I'm going to need a lot more information before I can really uh, weigh in on that. Especially the uh, scandal side of things. The release date is on Steam is still 2021. Well, we knew it was going to be end of this year or beginning of 2021, but 2021 if that's if it's just 2021, it could be pretty much anywhere. And it say, if it says December the 31st, that could be a placeholder. So All right. Let's move on to Cyberpunk. That's not been delayed then. I get messages along the lines of it's been delayed, it's been cancelled. Been turned into a console only game. You know, you get all the rumors getting thrown at you. Uh, but that's still November the 19th, then. All right. Good, 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 good. That gives me some time, actually. That does give me some time. Mm. Everyone thinks it will be delayed. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> it's, it's just like that, isn't it, at the moment? We're hoping for November the 19th. Nothing in gaming industry is set in stone, unfortunately. No, I think that's fortunately, Snake Doctor. I think that's fortunately. I I, I like the idea that they will release it when it's ready, not release it when the deadline comes. Um. So, yeah. All right, was there any other critical gaming news? Massively, massively important gaming news that I, I probably should have an opinion on. <laughs> Oculus. Oh, haven't... Right, Oculus. You no longer have... That's right, Oculus. Oculus are making it so that you'll no longer have an Oculus account. You'll have a Facebook account, which is a huge scandal because... Reasons, I think. I mean, don't get me wrong, I hate Facebook, but I mainly hate Facebook Welcome because I can't delete union. Facebook. And Facebook's like, it's, it's, Facebook is like herpes, really. You, once you've had it, you, you can't get rid of it. It really is. You're carrying it around for life, okay? Um, you could try deleting your Facebook account. Trust me, I've tried. It comes back. It comes back. It's like a bloody vampire. You stab it in the heart. You cover it in sunlight. You throw garlic at it, you scatter the dust to the four winds, and then someone sneezes a drop of blood nearby. <sniffs> Instant vampire. Yep. That's Oculus. Oh, that's Facebook, sorry. So Oculus now requires a Facebook account. It's annoying, but in actual fact, it's one of those things that is like we're, get, we're going to get really, really wound up about, but we've all really got Facebook accounts because we can't delete them. Um, and it probably won't make much difference all around, apart from when they first cross over and everything breaks. Everything breaks because it, it will. But I'm hoping Oculus won't be a problem for me sometime soon because I've still not been able to get a replacement cable for the Oculus thing. So I've not played, I have not played any VR games since, oh, I don't know, several months. So I've lost my VR legs. I've lost my VR legs. Um, I have sort of ordered an index uh, to be delivered to someone in Britain, but it's got an eight weeks uh, waiting period. Um, but it's been an eight weeks waiting period now for about three months. I suspect it's going to be a little bit more than eight weeks. So, yeah, um, yeah, right. I, um, so there you go. So that's Oculus. That's the Oculus news. Facebook promised the Oculus dev team that this will never happen when they bought Oculus. Right, so they lied. Facebook lied to us, guys. Facebook lied. 
I don't know about you. I'm shocked. <laughs> I'm sounding very jaded there, aren't I? I am sounding really, really jaded. And don't get me wrong, don't get me wrong. I absolutely hate it when think people do that, when companies do that. I hated it when YouTube did the whole Google Plus thing. What a nightmare that was. What a nightmare that was. Find a way to in integrate Facebook and Oculus a little better. Give incentives to merge the two. Give little incentives nonstop. Make it, make it so that people just want to link their Facebook account if if you really want to do that. Actually, no, I retract that. No, I'm, I'm retracting that. No, I am retracting that. You know why I'm retracting that? Facebook is not where I want to go for gaming chat. And whatever happened to the idea of separation of uh, roles? You know, whatever happened to having different social circles, different spheres? These are my drinking bodies. I go out and I do certain activities with them. This is my family. I do certain activities with them. These are the people I work with. I do. You don't, it's not right. I don't necessarily want my work to see all of my drunken, you know, or stupid pictures. Likewise, I'm pretty sure my family don't give a rat behind what my work is, well, at least normally, and so on and so forth. Why... Why? I mean, Facebook is there for you to check out all your exes and see which of them are still cute, right? You know, this is, that's what Facebook is for. The only time you ever get a message on Facebook is when one of your exes is suddenly single and is just, you know, you get that, so how are you? <laughs> you know, that's what it's for. That's Facebook. If you want to be cool and impress everyone, it's it's Instagram. If you want to tell everyone about your breakfast and your bowel movements, it's Twitter. You never do that on Facebook. It's perverted. Do you ever spend any time on Facebook then? Right? My space forever. Right? So all of these things have got different, you know... You don't need your Oculus account. I don't want my Steam account to be linked to my, you know, LinkedIn profile, my work profile or something, so that my boss can check out all the achievements I've got in Skyrim. None of his damned business kind of thing. You know what I'm saying? So no. No, absolutely, actually. Now I'm, now I'm, now I'm angry. Now you got me angry. Now I'm angry. Don't link Facebook and... Yeah. <laughs> What will happen if Steam one day gets bought up by Pornhub? Yeah, that could be like a real, a real dilemma, couldn't it? Well, like, I'm going to open up the comments so people can read these later on. <laughs> Link your Tinder account <laughs> to your Facebook account. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that's the ticket. <laughs> oh... Yes. Would you like to import all of your contacts from Facebook into Tinder? No! Swipe left for... Y is it left for yes? Right for no? Which is it? Left, right, which... Whichever. Swipe up for God. No. No, definitely. Right. Oh. Dear, oh dear, oh dear. Slave wiped to destroy civilization. Yeah. Okay. I'm with you. Oculus and Facebook. It's not, it, it shouldn't be a thing. It should not be a thing. Don't do it. I don't really care that much because I'm getting rid of my Oculus. Probably. Probably. Was there any other gaming news? Gaming news. Gaming news. That's not a game. Epic versus Apple. All right, Epic versus Apple. Uh, don't have an opinion. <laughs> Sorry, don't have an opinion. <laughs> uh, I still sign into Epic and get the free games and then never play them. Um, 
and I can't stand Apple products. Um, it's Fortnite, isn't it? Uh, they've started trying to do microtransactions on the Apple Store or something, or bypassing the Apple Store, and Apple are like, no! So now they're suing them. Don't care. Don't care. To me, this is like a crocodile and a shark fighting. Just happy to leave them alone. Leave them alone. Yep. <laughs> Okay, let's move on then to mod news. Trying to be structured today. Are you impressed? Mod news. Everyone's asking me about Skywind and Frontier. Why is everyone asking me about Skywind and Frontier? Remember, I've told you, I'm at least two to three days behind on all the videos and news releases. I literally downloaded a bunch of I must watch videos onto my phone and they go back as far as three days. Skywind... There's a new trailer for Skywind. Is there? Is there just? Right. Then I shall absolutely watch this. Is there a new trailer for Frontier as well? It's a new demo video. Skywind, a new gameplay trailer. And there's a new trailer for Frontier. Is there just? I'm going to keep saying that just to be annoying, I think. <laughs> uh, let's have a look. Could somebody put the link? Could somebody put the link? Yeah, we're doing a reaction video, even though we can't have a webcam. <laughs> Sky Oblivion released a Blackwoods trailer. It's the latest update with a bunch of gameplay in the background. Oh, right, so it's an update video. Oh, all right, then. Uh... Oh. Oh. My bad. I didn't mean to get you guys... Okay, yeah, sorry. I am getting everybody in a lot of trouble here. I really am very sorry. Okay, let me... Let me... I just... Uh... Oh, the ship! Right, give me a second. I want to get this. I want to get this so you can at least see what I'm watching. Sh no, I am sorry, Stepping Razor. I did ask. There should be something that automatically allows links when 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 I say it, but it would be probably pretty damned hard to actually get uh, working. Right, let me let me just copy and paste that, and then uh, okay. Okay, let's see, let's see. 15 minutes, it's 15 minutes. Ooh, look. Look, fancy. <laughs> and of course, the first thing I will do is remove it. <laughs> oh, look, look at this. Sadat Mora. <gasps> oh. You hate the hot. Why have they got head bobbing? Actually, why have they got head bobbing? Whoa, they've got. That's really horrible. That's 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 nasty. When it this isn't Sadith Mora. This is somewhere else. Oh, it was a transition. You can't hear any sound. Ah, oh, probably need to, uh, yeah, there's nothing, there's, just, there's no actual talking going on, but let me give you sound then. Head bobbing better be disabled. Well, my guess is it's part of the animations. It's a quest, not the start. Right, it's, it, yeah, okay. It's a quest. <gasps> Look at the detail. Is, is it something you need? Is it stuttery or is it is it my video stuttering or is it the game? I get the feeling. Three blessings, Sarah. Oh, look at the detail! It's like Morrowind only better. <laughs> oh, I'm lo I'm loving things like I'm loving things like this. The extra little touches of ivy around it. Farah's hole. 
Okay, incoming jokes. It's Vilkas. Hey, care to talk? You are a welcome break from the locals. <gasps> They've kept Mariana the old Madrid persuade and trade system. <sighs> okay. The Have to decide how I feel about that. Go to Endure Dams, a Dwemer ruin far south of Sadrith Mora, okay. and talk to Lariena Macrina. They're keeping the old Emperor conversation system as well. And Which I've got mixed feelings on. Mark the position on your map. I've got mixed feelings on the conversation. Because I have very mixed feelings about the original Morrowind dialogue system. Oh god, it's a cliff racer. Yeah, the head bobbing has got to go. That's really got to go. Oh, boy, look at the job they've done on this. Oh. They tried to keep everything. Yeah. The original conversation, though, the original dialogue, trying to get it into the Skyrim system will be... A bit of a pain, I imagine. There's so many options. But i got to tell you, whilst in theory the Morrowind dialogue system was a good idea, in actual practice it became... Um, well, it, basically it was a hypertext document. It was a hypertext document and in the end, no matter how into the game you got, you started getting into that methodology of click every single purple word in quick succession and see if anything new appeared and you got very good at spotting new lines in walls of text so you weren't reading it you now it might be different here because instead of trying to read the conversation they've got and click on the words they give you the list of words which i think is nicer which i do think is nicer actually but i'm hoping they don't have too many because here's the thing you could go and talk to um you could go and talk to a guard and ask him, like, two, 20 different questions about random things, and he would say the same thing as everyone else. Oh, there. And it got a You're bit repetitive. You're one of aren't you? Let's have a look. I can spot you a mile off. I've been waiting for some time now for assistance. God, this and is gorgeous. And I suppose you will have to do. I'm on a quest to root out a great beast dwelling within these ruins. You and I will explore together. Okay, no, no, no. Right. He told you? He must be playing games with us. They've got Our better. Right. No, it's. I'm. I'm liking this dialogue. Rogue mages. I have scoured the world over hunting a so specific it's, day drop. I don't want. I don't want. I'm. I'm going to be ignoring the, the quest because I actually don't want to pay much attention to it and get too many spoilers. So, so it's sort of a mixture. Then it's a mixture of Morrowind and Skyrim, this which I think is a good idea Welcome because trying to shoehorn. Name is thank you, Hackfield. Trying to shoehorn Morrowind system into. Um, Skyrim well would have been tough, purely because of the number of options at times. You but again, there were many disadvantages to it. So, all right, I'm I liking seek this. Only vengeance. What say you? Yeah, no, I, I, I right. right. So, let's go. Remember, it could just be like, aid. It, you I, if you ever remember Morrowind, if you would go and talk to a, a, a guard. You would get, you, you'd, you'd click on a line and then he'd say two or three lines. Or he wouldn't even speak. There was quite often no voice dialogue. So you would read it. But you, you, you started to read quicker and quicker. And then, oh, they've kept the flat dungeons. I mean, that's not... That's not end of world. Mind you, you could actually argue that Dwemer wouldn't necessarily not have flat areas. The way they built, having flat things is probably relatively... Hmm. Oh, I like the sound of that chest. Is this person using a controller?
So yeah, uh, what was I saying? Right, um, so yeah, so what happened is you would click on a line or two of text and then other keywords would appear in the line of answer you'd get. So then what you do is you pick one and you talk to them about that and then you talk to them about another one. The problem is, is very often you'd lose track of some of the other keywords you could talk to them about in the original sentence. And you start to get a bit paranoid that you've missed something. So you then start going through the list on the, it was on the right hand side, looking for keywords you might have forgotten. And as you got more and more used to doing that, it came to the point where you would have conversations and you could have like a, a 50 line conversation in about 10 seconds, because you would very quickly just whiz through them Over all here. and um, get every single answer and you could read them sort of thing and then just focus in on the bits that were important and i have to say it felt a bit like a mini game the dialogue felt a bit like a mini game if that makes well, i've seen these another dwemer ruin if that makes before. any sense it you felt be able to take a bit artificial whereas skyrim's dialogue for all your um the complaints you get about it it felt more like a conversation it did. It felt more like a conversation and less like a spreadsheet sheet of things to go through. So, but I am liking what I've seen so far. All right, I'm gonna skip a little, right? Follow me. Because I don't want. I don't want to get the full quest. Okay, brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Right. Thank you. Exclusive look at Skywin. The team is working every day to bring this level of quality shown in this gameplay demo to all aspects of the project. As we continue to finalize major quests and dungeons like these, we are calling on anyone with voice acting, level design, coding, and creation kit experience to volunteer at tesrskywin.com. We are especially interested in 3D artists that can design modular tile sets, architecture, and other environmental art. All right then. Okay, so what was the other one? They used levitate at one point in the demo. Yeah, frontier. Where's the frontier one? And Bethesda will not shut it down. You would have thought they would have shut it down by now if they were going to. Um, but as far as we can see, based upon our understanding, the... Um, the, the project is fine, as long as they don't reuse any assets, and they're not reusing any assets. All of the assets are brand new, created from scratch. So, they're, they're, they're not in any danger copyright. As long as, as long as Bethesda don't mind them, obviously, um, using the intellectual property, which they are doing. But Bethesda isn't the problem here. Bethesda is not the problem. you got to bear that in mind. Keep that in mind. Bethesda are not the problem here. The problem are the copyright holders for the assets. So, let me just see. Going. Black Marsh First Look. Which, what's this? Oh, this is Beyond Skyrim. That is not the Frontier one, then. Bethesda's given them open position, uh, permission. Right, I'm not too surprised, because like as I've said, I, Bethesda have never been the problem. I know a lot of people like to scream at Bethesda for shutting down this project and shutting down that project. Bethesda were not the problem. The copyright holders were the problem. And even then, we don't even know if the copyright holders were a problem. They could have been a problem. So whenever anyone contacted Bethesda and says... Can we use the voice lines or the music from your games in our mod? The answer had to be no, because Bethesda are not the copyright holders. Therefore, they do not have permission, at least for not for all of it. They don't own all of the assets used in their games. They license it the same way as you license the game when you play it. You don't own the rights to the game, if you know what I mean. You, 
you don't own Skyrim. You can't, you know, you don't own that intellectual property. Um, you can use it. Well, um, with Bethesda, they could use the voice lines, but they don't own that property. They can use it in their games. So it's something like that. It's way more complicated um, than, uh, than, than I would wish it was, but that's how it is. Right. They could probably have used it and no one would have complained. Probably. Probably. It was one of those things of don't ask, don't tell, and you probably would have got away with it because I can't imagine any of the voice actors turning up going, Oi, how dare you use that line from Oblivion in the mod that recreates Oblivion in... Sc as long, you know, they wouldn't care as long as the game wasn't being sold, probably. If it was being sold, they would have to... I don't actually know how that would work. Anyway, so this is Frontier. They basically asked for something Bethesda couldn't give, which was permission to use assets Bethesda didn't own. So this is Frontier. After years of hard work uh, not and pre-production, uh, Black, Black Marsh team is proud to finally show off a brief glance at the oldest land on Nern. The proud and ancient home of the Saxhili people, Atalepnus, nice. known to outsiders as Black Marsh. Nice. So we're getting more beyond Skyrim. I've got a, f I've got a feeling this could be something. I do with Leonard. <laughs> Currently, much of our level design has centered on the Ankoba River Valley of northern Black Marsh, Knahata in the Jeltung, as well as the southern portions of Black. Oh God! Could you imagine Leonard in this place? He's just going to be going. Ew! In the east, <laughs> the decayed time. majesty of the deep <laughs> marshes stretches to the rosy sands of Marshlands. the Marshlands. Oh my god. And the proud stone Clothringi Towers loom in the west, long since abandoned by It's a long way away. I'm sure it is, but, you Exploring know. Exploring these ancient structures may give you the opportunity to scavenge some of the ancient Welcome, armor the Clothringi once carried to Thank war. you, Kaylee. Other native Saxon okay. armors. I'm just... I just want to quickly go through this. ...of Morrowind. It definitely looks like they... Oh... It looks We're beautiful. We're to have the chance to show off the product of years of hard work. Oh, this and looks nice. we hope you'll stay with us as we continue to build this unique experience. Yes, will do. Thank you for watching. Oh, that was nice. Yeah. Do you want to know something, right? Um... You know, Moonpath to Elsewhere, of course, I, I did that with Richard. I didn't do it with Leonard, but I sometimes regret not... I, I said to myself, no, I don't need to do that. I don't need to do that because, you know, I've done it. Um, but obviously it ties in with Legacy. It actually ties in because you get the airship. Obviously, it's too late now. Leonard can't do it because technically, I think, one of the characters from that is... So, um, which is a shame, but we've got Bruma, and we got a few other things on the way. We just don't know when we're going to get them. Leonard can still do it. Well, I can he though, because technically, technically, the events of Moonpath to Elsewhere happen before the airship arrives. So there'd be a massive problem there. Because I believe, I believe, um, yeah, because the, the, somebody is dead who's alive in that one. But also, you know, the, the museum, I believe, actually sends you there if you've got it installed. So isn't Bruma incompatible with Legacy? No, didn't somebody say that um, Beyond Skyrim was... Incompatible with... Oh, no, I because of the borders. Wasn't it incompatible with Odyssey? I think someone said it might be incompatible with Odyssey because um, 
somebody Bruma and Legacy work fine. Yeah, I thought they might be. But I've I've there's no room in the museum for Bruma items. Oh yeah, no, I don't think there's a, I don't think there are displays for it. And and I'm never going to get them because obviously I'm on such an old version of Legacy. I'm never going to get any uh yeah. Plus, the artifact you get is the whole point of going to elsewhere. Yeah, no, there's no point doing elsewhere now. There's no point doing it now. But I'd love to do all the Bruma things as well. However, someone told me you can't do Beyond Skyrim and Odyssey. I don't know if that's true. No, we'll just have to see. Apparently, there might be some incompatibilities there, at least law-wise. Um... But in which case, I'll, I'll... The Bruma in Beyond Bruma is not the same game space as the Legacy Gateway. Is it not? Okay. Yeah, the one that... Right. Okay, I'll tell you what. Let's look at the next... Let's look at the next one. Which is Frontier. Hello everyone, my name is Thomas, otherwise Hi, known Thomas. as TG Spy, and I'm the project hey, lead Spy. the front Hey, how you doing? I feel I owe a video to the general modding community regarding release dates and when is the mod coming. Is he Australian? I want to make this video namely to dispel any notions of improper release dates as I've been made aware some news sites have been reporting random release dates during this year. Is TG this Spy is the on the wrong orders. side of the planet? The first major point I like to make. <laughs> I've got to decide what mods I'm going to use when I uh, when I play Frontier. And yes, I'm going to play Frontier, and I really want to play Frontier with Jack. Um, but I'm probably going to want to strip out a lot of the mods I don't need, and then try and replace them with other mods. There's like a mod called Bleed, which uh, would be a replacement for the realistic weapon damages mod. But I don't know how. I don't know how tough it actually is, because, of course, the realistic weapon damages mod makes bullets, well, kill you. <laughs> Be nice to your mod makers. Trust me, when he's saying, please don't email me with questions about this, he's doing so because he's probably had in the region of about 4,000 emails just asking for things that he's asked people not to ask him. He's probably a tad on the fed up side. It's amazing the number of people who ignore requests. Like, you know, you'll say, please do not ask questions that have been answered in the FAQ. And then you go to the comment section and there'll be 12 questions um, that were answered by the first point of the FAQ. It's hard to not get a little snippy with people when that's the way, right? It's just his attitude. I think his attitude was fine. <laughs> Trust me, when we're when we're not in public, our attitude gets worse. <laughs> but I like him. But I like in um, uh, Discord. Got another one for you. <laughs> but I'm trying to see who can who can come up with the most annoying comment. Mod makers should do it for the love of modding. They do. What they don't do it for is the love of getting absolutely infuriated. Huh. Uh, although, although, it is, is the thing. Uh, out of curiosity, what, what, why do people feel like they have a right to say why modders should do it? Just a curiosity for me. Why do mod? Why do people say that mod makers should make mods for the love of making mods? I have always been curious about that. To be honest, I've always I've always wondered why people feel like they could look at someone who pours their heart and soul into something, and then and maybe they did it because they want validation. Maybe they do it because they want to work as part of a team. Maybe they want to do it because it looked good on their CV. But some people come along and, and say, no, you should do it for the reason I say you should do it. That's kind of, that's kind of, that's one of the things that gets mod makers annoyed. We d yet there is a, there's a little feeling of, um, you know. I remember, I remember once I was arguing with some, some people on Steam Workshop, which I shouldn't do because the people who were on Steam Workshop are evil little gremlins. Yes, they are, everyone. 
There's never been a single person on Steam Workshop that wasn't an evil little gremlin. True fact that. Um, and they were like, they were like, there was, they were demanding at the time that the Sky UI team make a second version of Sky UI that didn't require the script extender. And they weren't asking, they were demanding. And they were saying that these, these people should not be allowed to host their mod if they weren't willing to do what people were asking them to do. Literally, this was the attitude I was getting. Um, and the responses that, that I was seeing were just were amazing. People were just utterly convinced that they had the right to dictate what, what Sky UI could and couldn't do and what they what they should be expected to do and how much time they were they were should be well basically demanded to, to, to create different versions for the different people. Um, the same was true when Bethesda Net came out. People were uploading mods from Nexus to um, Bethesda Net, and the argument was, well, if the mod makers won't put it here, we will. The mod makers don't have any rights to their mods once they've released them, right? They should just do it because they love modding, right? And I'm like, phew. A lot of mod makers, well, mod makers love making mods. Yes, they love making mods. But you know what else they love? They love interacting with the modding community. That is a huge part of it. It's a huge part of it. It really is. I liked making mods, but in the end, what I really enjoyed doing was just, people would send me things, could you add this to your advanced recon thing? And do you think this would be an idea? And I loved that. I loved that. And some mod makers don't. Some mod makers are like, no, I want to make this mod because I want to make this mod. I'm going to release it and you can suggest everything you want and I don't care. I'm going to ignore you. You can like my mod. You can hate my mod. I don't care. Right? And those guys probably wouldn't care if you uploaded it to Bethesda Net. But some mod makers want their mods to be a place so that they can interact with the community. Um, mod makers have bad attitudes. You are getting seriously close to getting banned. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's like there were there were people telling me that these mod makers um, should do this for the love of modding and and should not expect. Um, to be able to um, keep control of their mod and and have, um, um, you know, basically, they shouldn't be able to insist that their mod is hosted at Nexus so that they can sort of update it at Nexus and, and keep some sort of control over it. Even though, what the funny thing is, is people would be updating their mods and then the version that was on... Um, Xbox wouldn't get updated, and then the mod author would get grief for it because he wasn't up because somebody else had uploaded. God, it was annoying. It was so bloody annoying. So bloody annoying. Really, 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 really was. So, as you can imagine, as a mod maker myself, and as someone who is friends with a lot of mod makers, um. I've got a huge amount of sympathy for the crap they put up with from people who just seem to feel utterly, completely entitled to everything that that mod maker has ever made. It's, it's slightly annoying. You had a really bad experience with the guy who made the NCR Ranger up. Look! Oh, God, who's that? Lauren! Oh, thank you, Lawrence! Lawrence FB, thank you very much. Thanks for immersive hood. You are very welcome. You are very, very welcome. You are very, very welcome. Oh, now look, I, I get it. You've had a bad experience with a mod maker. I've had bad experiences with mod makers. I've had some mod makers that made me want to punch kittens. Because you know why? Because mod makers, this is going to shock you. But they're people. And some people make me want to punch kittens. It's just that's the nature of it, right? So. Oh. Unoctium did those mods. He's just pulling your leg. Oh, God, yes, of course. I recognize the bloody. Did he make those mods? I don't know. 
you don't feel like you should be timed out for recalling that bad time. Dear, don't get me wrong, Noctium, but I've just got a bit of a sensitive spot when it comes to people saying that mod makers have bad attitudes because I'm a mod maker. But to be honest with you, it's less that because generally speaking, most people are actually really nice to me as a mod maker for some reason. And I don't think it's just my YouTube channel. I, I just, I think it's because for, I, I, I don't actually know why it is, to be honest. Um, uh, but, you know, I've had positive experiences. It could also be because my mods are generally relatively straightforward. Um, so, but also in, in my early days when I was making things like the recon armor, I was pretty much just willing to do anything anyone asked, mostly because I was, it was, I was the sort of person, and people are going, do you think you could get the recon armor to do this? And I'm like, I have no idea. Let's find out. That's that's my attitude. So I think I got less problems from people, but you know, I I when people say because I've seen so many mod authors burn out, burn out because of such toxic people, such toxic evil little people that I'm really I'm really protective of mod makers. That's probably the way to think of it. I'm really, really... Even ones that annoy me, because there have been some that annoy me on a personal level or annoy me for, you know, other reasons, and I still have sympathy for them. I still have a lot of sympathy for them. <laughs> Don't punch kittens. It's good for you. It's good for you. Punch a kitten today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. I don't punch kittens. Shush. Welcome, minion. Thank you, D-Hunter. So, yeah. Oh, so it's a different Anoctium. Right, so you've got the same name as a mod author. Oh, all right, then. Never mind. Even Lovers Labs mod makers. Yes, all of them. I don't care if they made a mod that adds two penises to people's foreheads, okay? I don't care. If somebody wanted to make that mod and somebody wanted to use that mod, and I guarantee there would be somebody who wanted to use that mod, more power to them. Have fun. Guys, that's, that's, I hated that. I used to hate that. I used to go along sometimes to some of these mods um, and see comments along the lines of, you know, like these big boob mods. And it'd be like, why are you wasting your time with mods like this? Mods like this are for perverts. You should be spending your, I'm like, go away. Go away. Leave the person alone. If the person feels like the world would be a better place if it was filled with boobs, let them, okay? They might be right. You never know. They might be right. And it's, that's the thing with modding. If you think certain mods should not exist, you've missed the point of modding. I suppose that goes with... Within reason, obviously, yeah. I mean, if uh, there, there's obviously some things that would be, you know. Yeah, I, I think we all know there are some limits there. But, like, if if you're putting boobs on mole rats, you're not, as far as I'm concerned, you're not doing anything deeply offensive. You're doing something maybe shocking, right? But, you know, I think a lot of people sometimes think because I don't use glam mods or sex mods, I've got no interest in them, I would somehow be very judgmental of them. And of course I'm not. People were shocked when I did the CBBE video. I were really shocked by it. I'm like, why would you be shocked? It's actually quite technical, which is my wheelhouse. <laughs> That's my wheelhouse. It really is. It was quite technical. I wouldn't use the mod. I've got no interest in the mod. I'm fascinated by the technology, though, and the and the and the actual application. So yeah. 
<laughs> schlongs of mole rats. Precisely. You want to put schlongs on mole rats with boobs. Yeah. Have fun. As long as no as long as no one's getting hurt. As far as I'm concerned, if there ain't a victim, there ain't a crime. Stop it. You kind of need CBBE, though. I don't. But, you know, if you do, go for it. So, yeah, so, but that, I know that's, I have just seen so much mod maker abuse over the years that, um, I am, I am very, very, um, defensive when it comes to mod makers. It's, it's the, the quickest way to, to, to annoy me is to treat mod makers like they owe you something. So, <laughs> thoughts if Starfield is not moddable, um, it will fail. Um, <laughs> basically, my, my honest opinion. But it'll be moddable. I mean, they're using the same damned engine. Given how old the modding scene is, has it gotten different in the years? Yeah, but that's a, that's a topic that would take hours to go through. If Starfield is not moddable, I will not play it, says Neo. I, I wouldn't even say that. I wouldn't even say that. I, I, it's not like I demand the game be moddable for me to play it. I just don't believe... Um, for a start, I don't believe uh, BGS can make a game that's not moddable until they get a completely new engine. Um... And I don't think that's going to happen for Starfield, and I don't think that's going to happen for The Elder Scrolls Six. If it happens for those, then we might not get a moddable game. Or let me rephrase that. We might not get a game that's as moddable as we're used to. Every game's moddable, technically. So, yeah. Um, but it's um, it, it's going to use the same engine, so it's going to be moddable. And, and don't... I doubt there's any intention from Bethesda to... Um, change that. I can't imagine why they would change that, so... <laughs> Snuffkin said, Their myriad of engines stitched together is the awesome thing that allows great modding. Papyrus can bugger off, however. <laughs> yeah, I've got a love-hate relationship with Papyrus. Um, mostly a hate one as well, actually, yeah. <laughs> Does anyone know what Starfield is about? Yes, it's Skyrim in space. I hope. 